Okay, so hello and welcome back to another Unity shader tutorial. In this one, we're going to be making a simple force field effect like the one you see here that I've just made. Um, I'm going to be going through how you do the tiling and offset and the uh, like alternating, not alternating, but the like range of uh, alpha that goes up and down and all the different inputs and everything, and you know, just how to make a generally cool looking effect um, using a texture as well. So let's get into this. So let me just put this aside. So let's go and make a new material for our object. So create new material, uh, force field mat. And we'll make new shader, PBR, force field shader. One thing to note is that I have a texture here that I've uh, got beforehand because uh, for the honeycomb effect. Um, obviously, I can put this in the description if you want. Just make sure whatever texture you use for the force field is seamless. And a seamless texture is where on one end it continues to the other end. So, as you see, this is like repeated, but this line here links up with the end here, which goes up. And it basically means that as you offset it, it still looks like it's completely connected perfectly. If you don't have it seamless, you'll notice there'll be lines in your thing while it's moving around and it'll look wrong and you'll know what I mean. I'll show you it as an example in a second, well, when I get to it, but just make sure your texture's seamless and I will put this in the description. I just got it off Google Images, actually. I, I probably won't put it on the, in the description. Just search on Google Images, uh, honeycomb or like whatever texture, seamless, just make sure it's seamless and also make sure there's no copyright like watermark on it, otherwise it'll look stupid. Um, <laughs> because you'll have like text moving around on it. But anyway, uh, also yeah, if you're using it for your own game, you either want to get one just plain, complete, no copyright or anything on it like this, or make it yourself in Photoshop or whatever. It's not that difficult. Um, but anyway, force field shader, let's open it. And let's make all our parameters. So we wanna take in a force field texture. Now I know these are tutorials and I will cover what most things do, but I won't go as slow as I used to because if you've watched my other tutorials, sim the simpler ones before this, then you'll you'll understand everything anyway, well, most of the things at least. Um, anyway, we need a color to take in, force field color. We need a horizontal movement, so H movement, and a v vertical movement. This is for like how the, how the um, offset works, whether it goes horizontally, vertically, or diagonally. Uh, you can sort this all out here by tweaking these values. Um, I'm just gonna set the horizontal movement to one to start off with, and the force field color to a nice, uh, go for ready, I'll go for red, I like red. Um, and the texture will set to this honeycomb. Uh, what other parameters do we need? We need uh, the like force field power. Call, call them what you want, but like um, I already, have tested values to see what works right for mine, so I'm just gonna use those rather than sitting here and uh, messing around with values for ages. Uh, this is gonna be the min and max uh, range for the, how much it goes transparent. So like, this is basically the alpha value, um, min and max. I'm gonna set a 0.5 and 5. It's not, this doesn't go straight into the alpha, this goes into a Fresnel, which goes into the alpha. Um, I don't mean to bring it down here. Anyway, so we've got all of our parameters now. What do we want to do first? I guess first I'll do the like throbbing kind of effect of the um, the transparency. So first of all, we have to make sure this is transparent. Just change this to transparent. And we need to be tweaking the alpha value depending on, well, whatever we want. So it's going to be changing over time. It's going to be going up and down. So we need the good old sign time between minus one and one. And we want to also get our min and max range uh, here. And we want to remap. And if you don't remember what remap does is, it takes in a value range. So this goes between minus one and one. And if it passes in minus one, it's, it'll give us the new x, minimum x. And the y is the, the maximum. So if we put in our own range here, it means that instead of going between minus one and one, it goes between 0.5 and five. So it's very useful for getting the actual values you want since time gives out a constant value. And we'll pass this into a Fresnel, not fraction, sorry, a Fresnel. I always forget the S. Um, and as you see, what this does is it goes up and down between our values. Uh, now if we move this across, 
if we put this in the alpha now, as you'll see, it'll make the alpha look like the frontal effect, basically. Um, so if we go back here, you'll see here is our sphere, and it's going transparent and back to like it's not going completely visible because we've put it to 0.5 rather than zero. Um, where am I looking? Here I am. Uh, if we changed this to zero and five, it would go to fully. You'll see. It, for like a split second, it goes to the full um, alpha. Um, we want to also pass in our texture here for when we get to that. Anyway, I'll full screen this. It'll be easier to see for you guys. Um, we also want to have an emission kind of. We want to glow on it as well. We'll do the texture last. Uh, as we need more room for that. So we want to take in our. Uh, we want to do another Fresnel for the. Um, outside glow but this time we want to take in the power so we can we can alter this uh, as well and we want that to be multiplied by a color force field color so we're going to multiply these two values and this can go into the emission so now with our glow well we also have our nice sorry with our alpha change we also have a nice glow now I mean this is looking yeah okay so far it's looking meh it's transparent it's going up and down you can obviously alter the values for how you want but we want to have a cool like moving texture on it to make it seem more like an actual force field so this is going to use a lot of space so I'm going to give myself all of this space here we want to first of all go and take in our sample texture 2d and if we pass in our texture to this and we then output this, you will notice it won't. We need a lot of space to do quite a few things. So if we put this into the albedo and uh, press save, you'll see what happens is it, it just looks wrong. <laughs> the main reason is because if you remember, white is one and black is zero, and wherever white is is what we see and black is what we don't. So if I'm putting out this texture, it's actually gonna, we, we only want to see the lines, not the white, so we need to invert it. And luckily, there is a thing called invert colors, which is extremely helpful. We will put in our val our RGB, and we will output boom, boom, boom. Well, sorry, we'll invert the RGB, and now we'll output it. And that's still not everything, but we're getting close. So as you see now, oh yeah, sorry. As you see now, we only see the lines. The rest of it is just ignored, and it looks like the background color, which is what we want. Uh, we also want to multiply this by our force field color whoops so that um, it, oh. <laughs> so that it actually looks okay because having the white looks a bit odd you can have it white if you want but now that's actually the same color as the force field so that's looking better and what do we want to do now we want to actually offset it so let's just squeeze this in now it's all sorted now this UV the UV is uh, what we want to be changing with a tile tiling sorry an offset so we'll output the UV and I'll do nothing currently but as you see what what the tiling offset does it allows us to change this with the UV so if I take the offset and I change the X value as you see it's quite hard to see because it's moving very fast when I slide it it's moving uh, horizontally and if I change the Y it's gonna change vertically and that's all well and good but we need it we can't really do it by hand because it would be useless so let's just set these back to zero now the way we're going to do this like d as an animation almost, we'll be using a time thing because time time is extremely useful in this. Now if we went and tried to output, I don't know, time to offset, you'll see yeah, it looks okay but you want to change quite a few things with it. So first of all, it's very fast, it's extremely fast and two, it's moving diagonally and the reason it's moving diagonally is because time outputs a vector 1. And tiling an offset takes in a vector 2. So let's say the value here is 2. It's going to set the offset to 2 and 2. And then when it goes up to 3, it's going to be 3 and 3. And what that's doing is that's, that's being diagonal. Like say you have a graph and you plot the x and y. And you have 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, 4. It's going to be a diagonal line going up. And that's why this is moving diagonally. So we want to have the x and y independent of each other. So let's get rid of this. We want to have two multiplies and the reason we want uh, two multiplies is so that we can 
take our time. So time. Now the reason we're using time and not sign time like we always do is because time continuously increases whereas the other one goes up and down. So we want our offset to keep spinning. We don't want it to like go up and then down. Unless you do. If you do then you sign time but we're using just time. And we're going to take the horizontal movement up here and we'll take the vertical movement down here. So this allows us in the inspector to tweak how fast and all that lot how it spins. Also just for the sake of uh, helping I'm going to quickly add in one more node here. We'll add in a divide node which means that we can but basically it's, it's extremely fast spinning and you can still change that with the H and V movement but I would rather just bring it down in here as well. So if we divide it by 40 that'll um, just bring it down to like a very calm speed unless you want it to be extremely fast but you know it's, this is all up to you. You can take what I'm doing and change it yourself for what it makes sense. Now here we have a vector 1 output and a vector 1 output and a vector 2 input. So how do we get those to both go into the same one? Well if you couldn't guess or you don't know already you can just search around for it but we can actually combine which is quite a simple name for this. We can combine two values or three or four and I'll put them as two, three or four. So we're going to take in a one, take in a one, and output as a two. And as you see now, if we save and go back, this is moving. I put one in the horizontal and zero into the, into the vertical. So now it's moving left at one speed, which obviously is like an arbitrary value. But if we uh, change that to two, three, four, and so on. If we change it to minus one, you spin the other way, you know, you get all this. Uh, we can then just set this one to one so it goes down. We set it to 10, it goes down really quickly. We can also set that to minus 10, it goes up. And we could even go like five here and like uh, two here, and then we get a slight diagonal, a perfect diagonal. Or we could like go 100 and get a stupid spinning whatever. And basically, it's up to you now to tweak the force field to be spinning however you want it to. I think the diagonal actually does look okay, to be honest. Um, you could even in your shader have it so that the this gets changed over time like so it's kind of randomly moving around but I'm, I'm just gonna leave it as a one and one and what else do you want to do well I guess that's technically it there is a little bit more you oh, let's zoom out um, I can compact some of this to be honest uh, So let's zoom in. Um, so this first bit down here, I'll zoom in a bit actually. Yeah. So the first bit at the bottom here, these these four, is for um, throbbing, making the alpha going up and down so that we can uh, see it and then not see it as well. And it just looks better for a force field in my opinion. That that bit's optional, I guess. Um, this is just for the outer rim color here. Uh, so we can alter that as well, like how strong the outer rim color is. And then this is for moving the texture. Um, so obviously we take in, we have a time, which we then divide just to bring the value down to a sensible amount. And then we put in our inputs for the vertical and the horizontal speed and then combine it so that we can change the offset depending on our inputs. And then here is where we actually offset the texture. We then invert it so that we get the lines visible rather than the bits in between the lines. And then we give it a color for the albedo on the texture. So the things you can do differently, you can uh, change the texture on here, you can change the offset, you can make the offset uh, not just be a constant like one and zero, one and one, you could have that change. Uh, you can you can do whatever you want, that's the best thing about this. It's all about experimenting. Like I just sat here for about 15 minutes just messing around thinking, you know, what's a good way to make a hologram looking effect, uh, not hologram, sorry, a uh, force field looking effect. And I think I got to a decent looking point. If you have any questions for this and obviously ask and if you want any particular kinds of shaders then just ask as well. Just keeping in mind that uh, the shader graph is currently limited and I'm still waiting for the time when we can do vertex manipulation and also as far as I'm aware, I mean tell me if I'm wrong, I've looked up about it and I haven't seen anyone tell me otherwise, but you, st you can't actually change these parameters from code yet. I've tried and I even went into the shader code and tried doing it and I couldn't. So I haven't seen anyone actually say they can do it yet, but if you can, then you know, let me know how. That'll be very useful because then you can have it so that like the shader looks different if like 
it, the barriers on low health or something, then that would be really cool if I could actually like implement that into a video where I show you how to change the values in script or like an enemy starts dissolving like more when it's getting damaged or whatever. Um, but yeah, uh, so this is the final shader. Uh, if you've got any questions, ask, as I've said, like in the video if you want to see more shader videos, which are my po most popular videos right now, so I'm going to keep making them. Uh, obviously, like if you haven't subbed already, that would, be, that would help a lot, and you'll be up to date with the shader videos, and also all the other videos in Unity, Python, whatever, whatever, whatever. Just ask away for what you want tutorials on, because, I mean, I love making tutorials. Um, but yeah, so if I think I think I've covered everything I need to say here, uh, I'll want to mention one last thing: is this off the this tiling? If you wanted to change that, there's some problems because you've tried. If we try using a seamless texture and we alter this, it won't be seamless anymore, and it can mess up, which it does. You if you change that value and then you go back, you'll actually see that there's a line, uh, like, well, it depends where you do it, but there'll be lines where the texture doesn't, doesn't line up properly, so I would recommend not doing that. But yeah, like, obviously the best thing with shaders is as you uh, change the object, it's still, um, the shader is, like, perfect for it as such. Um, let's make a small thingy. Um, but yeah, I've said everything, so I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching, and goodbye.